I've noticed an alarming increase in the number of motorcycle accidents in the community over the past couple of weeks. So much so that I asked an artificial intelligence what motorcyclists can do to protect themselves on the road. It responded with three main concepts. The first being ATGAT, the second being situational awareness, and the third being practicing fundamental emergency skills. Okay, chat GPT. So, what is ATGAT? ATGAT stands for all the gear, all the time. It is a commonly used acronym among motorcycle riders, and it refers to the practice of wearing full protective gear whenever riding a motorcycle. This includes a helmet, gloves, a jacket, pants, and boots, all designed specifically for motorcycle riding. The idea behind ATGAT is to provide as much protection as possible for the rider in the event of an accident. Motorcycle accidents can be particularly dangerous, and the right gear can help to prevent or reduce the severity of injuries. While it may be tempting to ride without certain pieces of gear, particularly in warm weather, it's important to remember that the risks of riding without proper protection far outweigh any perceived benefits. Overall, ATGAT is an important philosophy for motorcycle riders to follow, as it can help to keep them safe on the road. A couple of years ago when I was new to riding, I was under the impression that wearing a motorcycle jacket and a helmet with some decent closed shoes and gloves was decent enough protection to be riding. However, I was very, very wrong. One day I went to the shop and got new tires fitted on my motorcycle and after they were fitted the guy told me, listen, when you leave the shop just remember to take it easy. And I did. I pulled out of the driveway of the shop, I rode to the first intersection and I made a left hand turn. In the process of making that left hand turn though, my back tire touched one of the white lines and you know that nasty film that they've got on the tires when you get new tires fitted? Well, for some reason, I lost complete traction as soon as my back tire hit the white line and I had a low side. The side effect of this was that I had ended up hurting my hip to such an extent that I was limping around the hallways of the office for about a week thereafter. It was excruciatingly painful before I could even walk. Immediately after that though, I went and bought my first pair of riding pants. They were a textile pair of pants, but they didn't really last very long. A couple of years later, I had another drop. This time it ripped absolute massive holes in my textile pants. From that moment on, I decided I'm going to just ride in full leathers all the time. One, because they're more durable, and two, because they've got much better impact protection. As a result, now I'm a firm believer and preacher of all the gear all the time. I don't think you'll ever find me on the bike without wearing a helmet, pants, boots, jacket, and gloves. Okay. But wearing gear isn't going to save me from other motorists on the road. You know, I wish I had psychic abilities so I could predict what other motorists were going to do. Unfortunately, being psychic is not a real world capability. However, there are some things that motorcyclists can do to increase their safety on the road. One of these is practicing situational awareness. Situational awareness is all about being aware of what's happening around you while you're riding. This means paying attention to other vehicles, road conditions, traffic signals, and anything else that might impact your safety, and being ready to react if necessary. Additionally, riders can take training courses to improve their riding skills and increase their confidence on the road. The more you practice and become familiar with different riding scenarios, the better you'll be at predicting what other drivers are doing and anticipating their movement. Okay, but gear and situational awareness isn't going to protect me if I still can't predict what the traffic is going to do. How do I practice my emergency maneuvers in a safe and controlled environment? One way to practice your emergency skills in a safe and controlled environment is to take a defensive driving course. Defensive driving courses teach you techniques to anticipate and avoid potential accidents, as well as how to react in emergency situations. Another option is to find an empty parking lot or other open area with no traffic and practice various emergency scenarios, such as sudden stops, quick turns, and evasive maneuvers. You can also set up cones or other objects to practice your ability to navigate around obstacles. If you have access to a closed course or racetrack, you may be able to participate in driving clinics or high-performance driving courses that will help you improve your skills and reaction time. It's important to remember that practicing emergency skills in a safe environment does not replace the need to always drive defensively and maintain situational awareness on the road. It's important to constantly scan the road ahead, check your mirrors frequently, and be aware of other drivers and potential hazards around you. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you found it useful and informative and that it'll inspire you to be a little bit more safe on the roads. Remember, life is going to throw a ton at you, but whatever it does, just remember, don't look down, look ahead. And until next time, ride safe.